In this video I will walk you through updating the modem firmware on a PinePhone uh, to the open source community firmware that has been developed by BigTor. For updating it you need the GNOME firmware updater utility that should be able to be installed through GNOME Software Center. If you go to the explore tab here and then to search. And then search for firmware. The actual searching here will take quite a bit, but it should work. There it is. It should be the top one. And after this screen loads, you should be able to install the firmware updater software. The reason the firmware updater app is used instead of the firmware updating functionality in GNOME software is that the firmware update utility can also switch branches to community and back to the Quacktail branch for the firmware while the GNOME software center firmware updates can only do the regular update in the same branch. If you cannot install the utility through GNOME software you can also open a terminal and install the package manually using sudo apk add if you write it correctly add gnome dash firmware dash updater typing on live video is not easy And here it will do absolutely nothing since we just installed the package. So now we can close this terminal and go to the firmware updater application. This will use the firmware update D service and it will find the Quactel modem. And here it shows the very long version number from Quactel itself and that it is updatable. If it does not show that it's updatable and these versions at the bottom, you need to go one page back and go to the menu and do refresh metadata and then go back. And it should see that there is a version update available with another branch. You will also see that all the versions here are listed as a downgrade, which is a slight issue because the version number from Quacktail is weird. So the 0.6 release is counted as a downgrade, but it is actually an upgrade. That also causes this warning message. The next warning is that this is firmware that is not supported by Quacktail, but it's supported by Pictor. So now we should switch branch. And in the bottom it will show that it's downloading the new firmware, which should be pretty quick. It's also important to plug in power, so I'm doing that now. Because you don't want to run out of battery halfway through your upgrade, even if you think you have enough battery power remaining. Because the update process will take quite a while. Now it's downloaded and it needs my password to continue. This is just the default password for this test installation. And now the upgrade will begin. At the bottom you will see a very small upgrade progress bar. That looks very optimistic now, but this upgrade will take quite a bit. In my case, this update took about 10 minutes, which is why I will fast forward this video now to the end of this process. And now 10 minutes later, the installation is successful. You will also notice that the modem is no longer visible in the top bar of Vosh and in about 30 seconds the modem should come online again and it looks like in my case it won't so in that case it is easiest to just restart your phone and the installation should be complete because here it should still show the old firmware so now the phone has restarted and if I go to firmware it should show the new firmware version and 
except I was too quick and the modem has not booted yet. It will take a second. And now the modem is back. It should also show up in the firmware utility. Yes. And I probably should not have started the utility before the modem was booted. So let's restart it. This looks a lot more responsive. And yes, here it shows that it, the current version is 0 0.6.6, .6, which is the firmware from Victor, and it shows that it's on the community branch. So that is one successful upgrade of the modem. Now with this new firmware installed, the modem on the phone should be a lot more stable. I hope this tutorial helps a few people update to the open firmware. At least it's as open as possible. There's still proprietary components in the Victor firmware due to it being a modem and there's actual laws limiting what can be done here. But at least everything that can be open here is open source. So uh, yeah, one of the great features of this modem. Um, thanks for watching this video.